Want. Want. Save. I'm 19. I'm too old to graduate from school. It's a war against the young, against the younger generation. They have passed Mariupol. It was much more likely to die there than to live. I was sure that we would not make it. And they created their own division in the Azov warehouse. Stressed poverty. Three people lost their limbs. Two, three, one. We will show you how tigers are being prepared. Stop the distance to the minimum. War is not a science, it is more of an art. And Vogue is just a gifted artist in it. This is one of the Azov legends. I lost, so I understand how it will be for my boys' families to lose. So I thought of everything to the maximum. The 21-year-old commander prepared a sample operation. He always goes first and always comes out of the last position. Special Division, Contact 12. Move forward. Don't know where to run. Contact 12. Firing. Blue class. You can't get through. Sonia, the helmet is automatic. Sonia, the helmet is automatic. Group to the right, get dressed, line up to the right. Get out, get out, get out. Come on, come on, come on. This story is about how young guys act in such a way that the older ones, and in general anyone, can get jealous. It's hard to believe that combat commanders are 20 and 21 years old. Plus, big brother, let's get to work. This is a video about youth and courage, namely the Contact 12 Special Forces Group in the Azov Warehouse. For the best recommendation of this video, subscribe to the channel, like it and send links to your friends. Now we are working on a special operation. Contact 12 is a special forces group created by the defenders of Mariupol from the Azov Regiment, also known as Boar. Move, men, move. I'm holding, I'm going. In military tactics, contact 12 means forward movement, that is shooting at 12 on the dial. The unit specializes in destroying enemy artillery. We hold the line, guys. Now we are working on capturing the enemy's stronghold. Commander New Water, the enemy has sent you another trip. Faster, I said. One, two, three. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Dim it, dim it, eyes. Con, con, commissar. Grenade. We are moving to the stronghold. Don't forget to lower the silhouettes, guys. 200 meters. Fire. That, that. 100 shots. Seriously. I'm going. Plus two small ones and we are in the forest. Grenade. You have 300. You have 300. We'll wait for them ourselves. That's it. We have commanders with a lot of experience and tactics that you can't read in books at all. It's just given to people. It's a gift. You said that you have very experienced commanders, but at the same time I understand that these are young guys, right? That you have a very young team of commanders. Yes, we are all commanders of our unit. Our commander is 21 years old. Boga. Yes, Boga. We have great respect for him. Personally, I think each of the guys here trusts his life in him. And our commander Redius, once or twice, Tabor, and so on. These are also very qualified, the best commanders of our country, for whom we are also ready to go to battle to the last. Ryan, you often promote the thesis that the war is a matter of young people. And you have such a young unit. That is, you call the young to wake up, not to do tactics and draw attention. Yes, I think that the old grandfathers who serve in the tro and show the result there. That some young guys are as many as there are as the grandfathers show. 
This isn't, of course, cool, but I'm such that this is a war of young people, a young generation. If I don't fight now, I don't know if I can raise my children in a free country. Likewise, some of us already have children. They fight for their children. And you need to be 18. I'm not saying that you have to fight, but to help do something for our victory is obligatory. Guys, I think you all saw the video from the comp how Ryanko was talking. Did you think that you would come here, you will have a normal salary, a cool uniform, and you will appreciate the elite army of Ukraine? Dead up! Dead up! One, two, three. Dead up! Dead up! Dead up! Dead up! Dead up! How did you perceive it, or should it be so? We saw it live. <laughs> what was it? Was it the rescue of Private Ryan, or some other movie? Who got into you? I just remember the comp. Each of us, when we came to Azov, it was more or less worse. Because the instructors understood that a full-scale war was waiting for us sooner or later. Fierce fighting and so on, and they were preparing us. We give the guys such a stressful situation, that is, you shout, imagine, you are 30 years old. A 20-year-old Ryanko comes and says, fell down, got up, fell down, got up. Well, like, your head can go to hell. If you endure all sorts of physical exertion and so on, then on combat missions, you will definitely not reach the end. When bullet can pass over you, and so on. At the expense of the com, it is after the com that we select the guys for our unit and give them such a course in which at any moment they can fly out that is not pass the tests, not pass the physical examination, not show themselves in some situations, and so on. That is, it is not so easy to get to us as you would like. What is the most important thing at the com that you give where people take off? Probably, these are night flights. Morally. Yes, morally, physically. In short, everything is complicated. We constantly keep them in tension, morally and physically. Because when you constantly keep a person, over time his willpower, as well as the body, starts to get tired. And when he is already tired, it is generally more difficult for him to consciously make some decisions, give a report of what he wants and what he thinks. And he is already starting to think about this topic. Will he carry it out? Will he be able to continue? And here his motivation is really tested. Does he really want to serve in this unit? That is just constant moral and physical strain. Because no matter what sport you are in, in the end, your physical endurance will end. And the question is how much motivation and willpower you have. And if it is really not enough, the person cuts off. And if it is enough, the person becomes a fighter. Among the commanders of the K-12 unit, football, ultras are enough. Before the war, they often went to the stands and not only to the stadiums. You know what I mean. Now the guys admit that they want to return to the atmosphere of the football holiday. It is thanks to such people that even during a full-scale war, championships are held in our country, football is played. And it is more interesting to watch the game with our partners, the Fabbit Company. For new players, the link in the pinned comment is a vital bonus. It goes up to 10,000 revenues. However, one important point, follow the principles of the responsible game. Because betting is about emotions from sports, not earnings, no one will take away our passion. We will return to the stands in our native cities. Fabric. We support Ukrainian football. What is special about your commander Vok? 21 years of the guys, and he commands the unit. Why is that? I think this is one of the Zolo's legends. So that you understand, he has battalion commanders, brigade commanders of other units. They just call him and ask, Vok, how would you do it? A lot of successful operations were carried out according to his plan. According to his command, 
a lot of different allied forces in different directions. Even recently in the Donetsk region, yes, even recently in the Donetsk region, that is, his other structures, what I heard, are involved in some special operations. Yes, they consult with him and ask for help. There is even support for him. The guy is 21 years old. Yes, the guy is 21 years old. It's just impossible to learn it. You know, they say, a person is given. A person is really given. He has such a gift. He thinks everything ahead. We have a person like Buna, who is a terrible strategist. Voka is also a very effective strategist. He does everything not according to the books, but at his own moments. It's hard to explain. War is not science, it is more art. And Voka is just a gifted artist. I'm an artist, I see it that way. Yes, and he really has a natural gift to create a beautiful picture on the battlefield. That is, if you understand, yes, every operation, every element of planning and preparation are separate elements that turn into one wonderful, effective and murderous process which is called, for example, the activity of Vok. It is very interesting how Voka survived in Mariupol in general, in principle. When he was lying in the 300th, he was already running out. And the cops came up to him and just saw a sharp call. They pushed with their foot, they say 200. And he just heard the steps, covered with a fleece and lay like silent. My friend was evacuated with an injury. When we went out, there was a group of Russians who were on the side. When I got in contact with them, the fight began. I was already without weapon, because he took my weapon. And a bullet flies in here and goes through the spine. And I fall, there was such a hole I fall and cut myself. I came as a child. I understand that I cannot move my legs. They just don't work for me at all. And my back hurts a lot. Well, the arm, there was such a hole. I just saw that I was running a little. I tamped myself, closed the wound. It was very cold. My t-shirt was torn. I was in a fleece. I hid. When I heard that people were coming, I understood that they were not ours. I covered myself and just knelt down. And that's how they accepted me. Some say maybe they just regretted it. I say it can be. I don't know. Did they take any documents? The documents were with me, by the way, in my pocket. But they did not take them. The chevrons were on the shoulders of the fleece. They looked at me like Ozovia. They did not bring any documents. They just disappeared and left. And you went on to the floor. No, I was lying. Then a group of guys went to break our position. They noticed and took it away. Vo, Sergeant, 21 years old, commander of the Special Forces Group Contact 12. Ozovia, 18 years old. Unfortunately, nowadays they do not allow to show the face of the hero. And, nevertheless, to tell his story in detail. He fought in the surrounded Mariupol. After the injury, he quickly returned to the line. Although according to the law, he could still be restored. Vo understands the whole specifics of the work of various units. There it is taken from helicopters to some mechanized brigades, and so on. I say, this is the future. From such people begins the future of our country. Because I am sure that with such people everything will be fine. Plus, the person is always with us. He is always ahead. He does not give the team somewhere in the back. He is always with us and always goes forward. He is always the first to go and always comes out of the position last. He always comes first in position. What is the main thing for you in planning an operation? Wait for the health of the personnel. Save your people. Yes, perform the task of saving your people. This is like our father. But sometimes there are such situations in Mariupol when it is almost unrealistic. This is not a war. You have to understand the same. But we have to think through each operation. And we have to think in detail. Think at least a few options for understanding the event. This is the minimum to prepare for the worst scenario. As some commanders have already told me, we thought that you'd all stay there after this departure. I knew that everything would be fine with us. We came out without any losses. This is like a Zaporozhian attack. This is our last departure. We came out without any losses. And you were told that you... What? I am very glad that everything turned out this way. We thought through everything to the minimum, to minimalism, to everything.
Therefore, there could not be any action. I lost. Therefore, I understand how it will be for my guys to lose. Therefore, I thought through everything to the maximum. There is no such ideal. I want to stay that way. I want to learn more. You came to us of yourself. You were not yet 18. I came just like that. When did I write 18 years old myself? All your life is Azov. This is a struggle for Ukraine. And you yourself, your settlement near Mariupol. It is often said that eastern Ukraine is so pro-Russian. But your story is completely different. There are bad people everywhere. That is, there are traitors everywhere. Believe me, they are in western Ukraine. I have already met such people. This is not some kind of dogma. It so happened that Azov gave me a settlement. Since childhood, when I was in school, I sang the anthem of Ukraine. For me, it was a pride. Then, some people say to me, flag of Ukraine, this is all wrong. We want you to sing the Russian anthem. Conditionally speaking, no one told me such a thing. But for myself, I perceived it that way. How can it be otherwise? Yes, I understand that there are some problems in the state. But we will solve the quality of the issue ourselves. We do not need to show. If our brothers did not help us, I think everything would be even better for us. Listen, despite everything you went through, I understood that you still have a fear for life. Well, the feeling of fear is like a feeling of pain. It gets used to it over time, it goes away. From this you can make a conclusion that there is no fear in fact. I have a fear for my personal well-being and for my family. That's all. For yourself. Well, what else can they do to me? They will beat me up. I know that they will never buy me and will not convince me. That's all. What else can they do to me? Commanders gained experience in Mariupol. A full-scale war for you happened when you were beyond the borders of Mariupol. And then you flew to the surrounding Mariupol by helicopter. Did you want to get there? Yes. From the point of view of conscience, I had to try to do it. Me and seven other active Azovs were given the opportunity to get there, and we decided to use it as much as possible. I was sure that we would not reach them. Really? Yes. We threw out the medals, the things that we had from the departure. Why did you throw them out? What for? They will burn out anyway, like bats. And we gave all the things to the servicemen from the place where we had to fly. We took everything necessary because we were sure that we would not need these things anymore. All jokes were about us burning out. What does a person feel when you are in such conditions? For me personally, it was all at one breath. Fascinating. And an indescribable picture when you fly over the sea to the Azovstal itself. We landed on the Azovstal. It was very atmospheric, a fascinating picture. These emotions were worth it. The horizon of the city, everything in smoke, explosions, the sea. And this is a real madhouse, of course. When I was wounded and sent for evacuation, Yes, then there were four helicopters. One was shot down, he fell, died, unfortunately. He burned out. And we had a hit, but the board withstood this hit. Most likely, the missile shell did not explode. And we flew on the same engine. When we flew, we did not understand what it was at all. And when we came out, the pilots said, Happy second birthday to all of us. We were beaten during the flight. The pilots are the best. How do you evaluate all this? First, you flew here, and then after the injury, you managed to return. You were born in Soros. You have two birthdays. How did you get through all this? Often I asked myself this question. But it came down to the fact that it was the brightest week of my life. And that's it, perhaps. Just lucky this happens sometimes. It's a pity that not everyone is as lucky as I am. You were there for a week. From the moment you arrived, a week of fighting, and then the injury to the head, and they told you that you need to be evacuated. I have a vivid memory of every day. 
because my brothers, who at that time on the 70th day, if I'm not mistaken, held the defense, I was amazed every time I saw how they went into positions every time. Because on the first day, I was already a little shocked by the pace of the battle. What was going on there, I honestly could not even imagine. And my friends, 70 days every day. The brightest moments are to watch the infantry destroy tanks with improvised means. The last RPG shells. These are the brightest moments. And such moments every day are special in their own way. Describe the pace of the battle, please. Why is it so intense? What caught you? The front changed very quickly, and you did not always have time to get the necessary information where the enemy is now, and he could work practically from any angle. There is constant circle defense in positions. The guys have what you often hear on the radio. In that group, we have a 360-day circle contact. In the second group, the circle, that is, the guys came out, moved, moved. There are opponents like cockroaches. You constantly observe them. For me, there was no such experience yet. And given that they have a complete superiority in everything, this only made the defense more difficult at the maximum level of difficulty. After everything you have experienced, and your brothers, many of you have returned to fight now. Although you could have chosen to be instructors, we certainly returned to civilian life. Did you think that after what you have already gone through, it would be possible to rest? You have done so much for the country. I thought about it, but now is not the time to feel sorry for myself. And the key question, when our guys return from captivity, how to look them in the eye. I'm tired, I'm already resting. And to say this to people who have been in captivity for so long, it would be a shame for me personally. This is a moment of conscience. Well, it's not time to feel sorry for yourself. There will be time for this a little later. I am moving myself with this. There were often competitions. My friend Redis also participated. He was a great goalkeeper. Well, he is now. We had competitions once or twice a year. Rows with rows, battalions with battalions. Sports was actively promoted in Azov. And there were competitions in boxing, wrestling, including football. There were a lot of former footballers, guys from professional and semi-professional teams. It was interesting. What position are you in? Attacker? Did you play against him or in the same team? By the way, I did not get it against him. We did not get it. But we were constantly watching. Is he okay in that? In general, in full. I think he would even compete with our professional footballer. Really? He really plays very well. On the line or at the exits? In general, everything. He is tall. Well, you can see that he was engaged. And in full order. And if you don't know your friend Radisson, and just don't follow him at all, and you just meet with this person at least once, you will understand that this is some kind of a leader. Because it's football or it's our regiment, you can always feel the leadership qualities. And when my friend Redis played at the gates, he constantly watched the whole team. He gave advice. Well, it looks cool. Could you become a footballer? Yes, probably. Yes. It almost happened. You even reached the level of a double medalist, and you were about to sign a contract. Yes, but I did not sign the contract. I got injured. Well, that's it. And I did not go anywhere. Don't you feel sorry that football did not work out? No. In any case, 2014, the beginning of the war, it seems to me that I would have left anyway, and I would have gone to the front. How did you get injured in Mariupol? So to speak, we did not come to our own people. We brought food to my dead friend, one and the other who unfortunately died. You did not know that he died. No, we did not know they were there. We have already left our positions. We drove closer to the center of the city, but there was a descent. We got tired. It was blocked. We did not know why. Well, we drove there. An intensive fire began. By our car, 
Well, we got out of the car. We thought that these were our forces, relative units, either Terra or Marines. You got confused. Well, yes. Did it happen often? Well, you know, in many units that were there. I don't want to name them, because there were tigers everywhere, and very worried people were everywhere. But some units had very bad communication. They did not care who you are. They first chew, then talk. Well, we did not want to fight, because no information. It was our back, and the enemy, according to our information, could not be there. But it happened as it happened. They wanted to take us prisoner. Well, refused. They refused. They entered the battle. Were they Russians? It was the GRU, yes. Their special forces. How many were you wounded? Five bullet wounds. Five bullet wounds. Yes, yes. And what happened next? How did you get out there? If you were clamped at crawl. Then crawl to the Cossack. He was already dead. These are very worthy people who just showed themselves unrealistically. But Cossack, what brigadier? These are just tigers. Well, I was just sure when we got into such a situation. I was just sure that neither Cossack nor brigadier would surrender to captivity. And it was not scary with them at all. It's not because I'm brave or something else. I just ended up with these people. I always knew that we were each other until the end. And there was no fear. Only because there were such people next to me. And I really hope that the Cossack has already been buried. And the brigadier, unfortunately, has not yet returned the body. I really hope that his body will return. And he will be buried with honors as a hero. Well, I know that these people deserve the highest rewards. I hope that they will be awarded. Or, in their honor, they will be called streets. They are really worthy of this. How did they prepare you so that you are ready? Five bullet wounds. You somehow survived to crawl. I was just lucky that I had a massive bleeding. But I don't know. I was already losing consciousness. I was sure that I was 200. I raised my head up. I just promised my mother that I would fight to the end for my life. And when I realized that it was over, everything was over. There was so much hail in front of us. I already thought that I would have finished with hail because I did not want to surrender to captivity and my machine gun flew away because of the wound, and I did not have a grenade, because everything was on the plate carrier. We took off the plate carrier before that, and I thought that I would finish at least if I got captured. I did not want to humiliate myself in front of the camera. I did not want my family to watch, because anyone can be broken, and I did not want my family to watch it. But I was lucky. Were you a civilian then? Yes, I crawled. Then the civilians found me. They loaded me into a car a white bus and took me to the positions to our positions yes to our positions I said that if I die in their car they should stop any soldier with blue tape I explained the situation to them where I had a contact where my brothers were killed I did not think well because I lost a lot of blood but they promised me that they would do it and I was calm at that moment the main thing for me was to warn my forces that there is a FK there to take the guys, and that's it. The NACO doctors got up. This is some kind of cosmic revolution. Yes, these are very worthy people. I just don't know when these people slept. There was a stream of wounded. Plus, there were a lot of us in the bunker. I don't know, to be honest. I did not even see when these people had time to sleep. They made a huge effort to do it. We owe a lot to these people, as well as to the guards who brought food to the wounded, in order to bring us food and water. They took a very big risk, because they began to move problematically along the territory. They took a very big risk of their lives. And to all those who were in Mariupol, thank you very much to these people. These people survived the situation to the maximum, as it turned out. It was the last two turrets that flew in. There were Marines on one of them. And we somehow passed the call. I don't know, by a miracle. I counted up to 30 rocket shots at us, plus the machine gun. The tail was cut. The Marines told us that they sat down at the gas station somewhere. They did not get there. Then, after a while, we found out that the turret had fallen. Everyone was burned.
What was the moment? Did you understand how late it was? This understanding was initially when they told you about the evacuation. I somehow strongly believed in myself. From the first days, literally on the first day, I was still lying, they were stabbing me, dripping. On the second day, I already asked to give me crutches. I tried to get up, I said, I'm fine. I will try to move on. Because the understanding that we are in the ring, and sooner or later, we will have to do something. There was a shooting battle at the Zumstall. It's more than just lying there. They throw grades at you, and that's it. I tried to get up, but as a result I was sent to evacuation. And there is an understanding right away that you have literally two to three hours of this flight to live. Either you will live and stay in the bunker, or you will fly through, or you will fall. Because before that, the turrets with my brothers fell, which were from my calculation, and it was not very good. You were in Azovstal. Yes. You were injured there. You returned to the hospital. You recovered quickly and wanted to go back there, right? Yes. We were promised, for example. We were told that we could return. So you did not want to be rehabilitated, although you had an offer to go abroad. Yes. We refused to be rehabilitated. We refused to recover. Why? We wanted to get back to the guys. You are injured, and I understand that you have already recovered. But not completely, right? Yes. My leg is still in a bad condition. Roughly speaking, if I walk for a long time or in equipment and so on, it is very difficult to get up, even in sneakers. By the way, you... Yes, sure. What is your story interesting? Before the war, as a rule, we shoot in Azov. Many football fans, hooligans, and you were with Dior at the stadium. Yes. On the other hand, you did not let the guys pass with fires. Did you check the football? Yes. In principle, yes. But they themselves agreed with the Olympic administration. They carry fires anyway. Those who agreed. My task was to tell the black fans. I just checked the people. And that's it. Cultural and so on. There was a regular training at the university. In addition to my main job. Were you standing near the ultra sector? Yes, I stood opposite. Were there any conflicts? No. I am a cultured person. I am not aggressive, not conflicted. I look at them. They look at me. Fags poke me. And that's it. Just cosmonauts flew out there. And usually dealt with them. How many were you surrounded in Mariupol? And how did you manage to get out there? From the very beginning. When the 24th came. We went to Malay Yal to out of anxiety. To meet the Russian naval landing. At 4 in the morning. We sat there until 11. We did not meet anyone. We went to make ambushes. We had to make Russian columns, which were supposed to land from Berdyansk. We did not meet them either. And at night we went to Mariupol and began to prepare for the defense to dig in their positions near the Mariupol airport somewhere on April 5, 5 to 6. I was wounded. In five days, I was evacuated to the Azovstal, lying completely. And I was already there. Before they were captured, I survived in such moments. After which you could go to the casino for all the money and win. Such luck. For example, for example, when we were pierced by tanks at the airport, tanks, infantry. Well, in short, the Russians pierced us in such a normal number. We ran away from them through the private sector. Then we ran out to the open field to get to Mariupol. There is such a bright open field. And you understand that you just need in the open space to run to the dangerous area. That is to cover no one, nothing, just the infantry platoon must run over to survive. And on the road that covered the whole field, there was a division of the enemy, 100 meters from us, and they just started shooting at us in the open field, without cover. They started shooting, and I understand. I run away, and the bullets whistle at me, just, and do not hit. And I was already tired, to such an extent, that I could not even run. I had machine gun. I had everything with me, plus exhaustion, plus, well, a lot of conditions, plus the field of Chernozmin. It was stuck there, plus weight. And if not for the brothers, who ran up there, helped to carry a machine gun, I would have died there, there to die. It was much more likely than to survive. Nesbar Polyadovka, the analysis of the day's operation is underway. Small test. We just want it to work. Everything is perfect. But it never happens. After that, the commanders received a challenge. In one evening task, they are very difficult. Our landing point. Because the idea is plus or minus here, you need to prepare personnel and essential attributes. For example, water transport, 
We have evening outing. I give said night. And we took at night vision. And so on. We have a task. Forcing the river Dnipro. The boys built dams. And after that, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have a task. Forcing the river Dnipro. We have a task. Forcing the river Dnipro. We have a task. Forcing the river Dnipro. We have a task. We have to split into two groups, go to the observation posts and work on the Hamer's guidance to see if the Hamer's is working and confirm that the target has been destroyed. Guys, we are unloading, we are disguising. We have successfully launched a fire. Their task is to fixate the damage by means of video surveillance. You set certain limits, mini fields. How will they understand where the mini fields are? During the planning, the reconnaissance tells them that there are possible mini blockages on the shore. But we also know that there is a window from the ME in this note. Now the guys will go through the reconnaissance in that note. At the Latin observation, we will put tablets, radios, and so on. Sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down. We continue to work on the shore. Friends, I hope this video tells you how much work the guys are doing to implement this training operation. I think about it and want to address those who allow themselves to criticize the armed forces of Ukraine or other military formations every time they want to do it, try to do something similar. It is a great help to our soldiers. Do not miss the continuation of the operation. How to remain unnoticed. My nickname is Khan. I am 43 years old. My nickname is Rubik. I am 20 years old. My nickname is Lyka. I am 36 years old. My nickname is Scout. I am 90 years old. Very different range. Some are 30, some are very young, some are only 20. You have very young commanders. How do you feel when you are commanded by guys who are 25 years old? If you put Vova and Renka together, their total age will be less than mine. But it is very comfortable. Vova is very talented, if not a brilliant soldier. He is very balanced, calm. I am 100p percent confident in him, just like Renka. He has a lot of energy, but he directs it in the right direction. He has a lot more military experience than I do. I trust him 100 p percent, and I am very glad that I have such commanders. I am very comfortable with them. Very cool commanders. I am transferred from the Ukrainian armed forces only because of this. Because there are commanders who are really professionals, regardless of age and everything else. What did you do before the full-scale war? I understand that you have now joined the army. Tell us in a few words. Before the war, I worked in an investment company that was engaged in real estate. I worked as a senior capital assistant on a ship. I have been working in the service sector since I was 18. Just before the full-scale war, I worked as a master of manufacturing studies at a university. When did the war in Ukraine begin? In 1922, I managed to graduate from school and applied for the first course, but I did not finish my studies. Now I have come to the Azov. I studied engineering at the Glazova Machine Building. Are you the youngest in the unit? 
Yes, I am the youngest. How do you feel here? Comfortable, especially because of the commanders. Our commanders are cool, and the team, too. Although there is such a difference in age, but we understand each other. How did you manage to pass the Because we said that this is a very big test and not everyone passes. How difficult was it for you, and what was the most difficult? To withdraw 1350 times in two hours. Not everyone survived there, right? Tell us your biggest impressions. From our com 75 people passed 50 times. We are three in one com Did you also have 1350? No, there was no such thing. There was a stress niche where three people lost consciousness due to overloading. One, two, three. I do not raise my legs. Guys, we will learn to raise our legs. Yes, it was difficult, but everything is possible. The difficulty is only in the head. If you want, if you have a spirit, if you have motivation, you will do it. There is no such thing to drive a person. There is only a test for her motivation, for her character. Guys, I have a question for you. You could now study at the Institute as your juniors and do your job. I think your parents told you to study do your job. Let the men fight, right? I told my parents after I signed the application to Azov. After I passed the recruitment center. I came to Azov after I saw the interview with the Renko. I will think how this guy from whom I could fight for 19 years, and I cannot. My parents thought that I went abroad first. I went from Plast to some patriotic camp. I watched a lot of interviews, including with Renko. I want it to be so cool to defend Ukraine. I wanted the war to end as soon as possible. Renko, have you ever told that you were very influenced by the song of Sasha Yermak? My country will not fall on its knees. Yes. Nazar Rensevik or just Renko. So that you do not have love your mother, eat porridge and love Ukraine. This video from Azovstal made one of the youngest fighters in the Azov regiment famous throughout Ukraine. He was captured and a fearless interview with a Russian propagandist. Why did not you give up earlier? Did you understand that everything? There was no order. We are soldiers. We do our job to the end. There is an order to stand. There is no order we leave. Before being captured, Reko received an award for the courage of the third rank from commander of Azov, friend of Regis Nazar Stali. He recovered and very quickly returned to the ranks after the capture. Ultra Svinitsia Neva, 2014 year. I am 12 or 11 years old. Events on the Maidan. I just see how young people, students, even some school children run out the house just to take part in our independence on the Maidan, for our rights. This is a new year. I think, damn, it's real that I want to take part, as my childhood is just a bunch of stormy emotions. I was such a good boy and a hooligan at the same time. I studied well at school, but in the yard, everyone knew me as a killer. We fought with the boys with sticks door to door, chased on Tarzans, ran around the garages. And it was somehow, well, I had bad childhood. We played football, our kids knocked down all the legs, came home in bruises, but still went to fight. On the Maidan, when all happened, I saw this track. Then he released a video clip of how our boys and girls were beaten. How there were bloody battles on the Maidan. I think, why am I not there now? I'm really on New Year's Eve, everyone eats tangerines, I'm sitting at the table, and I have tears in my eyes. I watch this video clip again, and tears just come down. Well, I probably lost the moment when Ukraine was reborn. Young guys said, they came to Azov after your interview. You, you understand that you are now just like Yermak. You influence the youth. In Maybe yes, I understand it, it's very cool, of course, but I don't always say that everyone went to fight. 
кажу завжди, щоб там ніхто всі йшли в I don't want such a fate as in my brothers as in me, my children and some other people. I have my own path, they have their own. I don't want to be an idol for anyone. I don't want to have people there who are fans of me. But if I can convey my opinion to people, I think it's very positive. And when guys come here who really show a good result, and I think, well, we really have such a youth, that the future is behind them. Then I feel very pleased when I find out that, for example, Rinka, I watched your first interview with all Azovians and realized that I wanted to go to Azov. This is very cool. Your division, middle age, I understand, 23 years old. Super young, super young. Is it good or bad? I think it's great. We really have a golden middle. We have guys who are 18, 19, 23 years old, and so on. And we have older guys who are 36, 41 years old. And when young people want to push their division, like, I would do better this way, then the older ones are like, no, we have more experience. We see it this way, and they find a common language. Then they talk to the commanders better. That is with me, with Vova, with Vima, with Kota. And we make a joint decision. We have a very cool team, and we are happy with the guys. They show themselves in training, in tasks. Brave real warriors, which I have no doubt about, that's for sure. After you survived in Mariupol, I remember you telling me a story when you were hit by a tank, and you thought you were 200, right? Yes, yes. I thought you were an absolutely fearless person, although you yourself said you were scared. Well, of course, I'm afraid to die, because I have my family, my brother, my sister, who I leave them to, and so on. But there is such a moment that my life is worth nothing in comparison. I just treat myself when I'm at war, that I'm just a combat unit made of flesh and blood, which is supposed to complete the combat task and bring maximum benefit for our common goal, the victory of Ukraine. When I'm at home, I'm a completely different person. I'm family friendly. I hang out with friends. I hang out with my family. I was reading the autobiography of Prince Harry in English, and he fought in Afghanistan. He wrote in the book that he killed 25 people. Do you know I'm not asking you to say the number? If you don't want, how many people did you kill? I worked on targets, but I will not tell you the exact number, because I had moments when I was able to shoot at the bodies of my enemies, and I could see that my bullets were flying at the target. There were moments when I could not approach it and see if it was 300 or 200 and so on. I don't consider myself a killer. To be proud of it, to tell how many frags I earned at war, and so on. Is that more than Prince Harry? I don't think so. I have a little advantage in terms of technique. How much? Prince Harry did not say how much he burned. Very cool, guys. I think you heard it. So put more warm words for them in the comments. Personally, I was struck by this phrase that after the war in Mariupol, they simply cannot watch the war from the side because there is responsibility for the brothers who died and also for the brothers who are now in captivity. The victory in this war depends on each of us, on the participation of each of us. Everyone can help as he can. Of all the equipment you saw today, they bought a lot for the donations you are helping. So we are now making a small collection for a drone for 200,000. I am sure we will quickly close it. And for the largest donation, we will give a t-shirt from the Soviet arsenal to Alexander Zinchenko with an autograph. He gave it to the guys from London to support this collection. So come on, join us. We are landing, trying to take off. Нет, а мы высаживаемся, пытаемся взлететь. Сейчас, сейчас. Нам надо
How did you get here? Where are we now? Somewhere between the trees. Plus, we are almost at the point where it was said. Almost. But I think something is waiting for us. Super. Shorten the distance to the minimum. Zalp, write down the directions. What we see here means that we are heading towards Mars. I am talking about this moment. The enemy has a lot of losses. Now we are determining whether we hit the village exactly. We were not noticed. We worked. Yes, all the ants. Yes, honestly, the worst thing in the history is the ants that just tear. I think that after the war, we will not be interested in the fields in those fans who fought. Because before the war they brought us some adrenaline, fun and so on. But now there is a war. And we showed everyone that fans of Ukraine are the strongest people in the world. One of the strongest. Because they form the backbone of the coolest units in our country. This is Kraken Azov the third O's. Friends, one more important point. Subscribe to the social network Contact 12. They are in the description of this video. There is a lot of interesting content. We will leave all social networks in the description. It would be very nice for us because we want to share our ordinary life, ordinary guys who defended our country. Just a beauty. Wet, wet, wet. Thank you very much for your creativity. You help us very much. And please do not stop. Due to a security issue, unfortunately, we cannot reveal the details of the specific special operations that the guys from K-12 carried out. These are fantastic moves. Believe me, they will not change in the future. We will reveal them till show their faces. These are very worthy people who are worthy of our attention and support. While preparing this material, we talked a lot during the filming, and the guys constantly emails P or Harasize how much they are waiting for the return of the commanders of the Azovstal, who are now in captivity. And while the material is on air, Radius and other guys are already free. This is news that will undoubtedly change the course of events and help our army. Cats or dogs, dogs, favorite military equipment, probably a Hummer. What superpower would you like to own to fly? Favorite dish? This is a reference to the video with porridge. I got it. Probably carbonara paste. The strangest thing that you were written or offered on social networks. Intimacy on a Zubstol. Sex was offered on a Zubstol. No, they just threw photos and videos. Favorite city of Venetia. Probably my brother's train, which died recently. We are together with the team. Gypsy or Boyarsky? Gypsy. The best in the world. Guys who play football in my yard on grass and so on. Stone Island or company. Company. Or raid division. Raid division then. The song that will end your battle. Mom, I burned. What was your favorite movie? I don't know. I would be in jail for my right-wing radical politics and my views. What is your favorite movie? Probably Harry Potter, as I have loved it since childhood. And every year, I watch all parts. Have you read the book Jules Verne, the 15-year-old captain? No. What book do you like? The last time I read it was when I was in captivity. And the very last book I read was Citadel. What are the biggest tigers you have ever seen with your own eyes? Probably my brothers from Mariupol, from Azov who fought every meter of the city, and so on. If we talk about now, then it's the third Kraken and Gur. What will you do after our victory? After our victory, yes, we will be a little sad, because we need to pay tribute to all the guys who died, all the relatives who died, and so on. After that, we need to rebuild the army and the country. Thank you very much.